I'm Per Eriksson. So here we are in Sweden uh, and we're here to meet some of the best chefs in the Nordic kitchen. As you all can see, I'm driving an Audi e-tron, an old electric car. Audi and uh, some of the best chefs in the world, they are focusing on innovation, design and sustainability. Let's meet some of the best chefs in Sweden and hear about their style of cooking. together here with the chef uh, Niklas Yngveson here at uh, the one Michelin star restaurant Boga. So let me ask you first uh, Niklas, how did it all start? Why did you get interested in food in the first place? Uh, I had a grandfather who was a uh, chef uh, at uh, overseas and he used to work at ships. I think from that side but I started interested in food when I was like 20. What in food was so interesting for you? I, I worked with a really good chef and he just, just said to me like, you have talent for this. And that was like the magic word, just like you have talent for this. And I was like, oh, thank you. And then I just, this is what I want to do. How did you get into the professional world of restaurants then? I had a very good teacher and he also used to work abroad a lot. And he said the best way to get a good, become a good chef is to work overseas. How did you then uh, decide to open your own restaurant? I met Gustav what is it, 2004, when we worked in a, in a restaurant here in, in Gothenburg. And we worked together for two and a half years. And um, I don't know, somehow we just connected. If you were to explain for somebody that's never eaten here about your style of cooking, what would you say? We try to work as, as local as possible. And uh, like the basic would be a lot of vegetables. Start with the vegetables on the dish, and then you add the protein. Then like a fish, shrimps, oysters, beef, pork, etc. But I think it, in the beginning, it's it's very Swedish traditional flavors, sort of. You know, a, a lot a lot of things like flowers, herbs from from the forest and stuff like that. Everything that's on the plate you should come from the Nordic countries. To be able to create the, the food you're talking about, uh, where do you find the right products and? Uh, uh, produce to be able to do that? Uh, a lot of small suppliers around around Gothenburg and usually Swedish ones because we have a company called uh, uh, Bundens Gafferi and it's like a farmer's grocery and he has the contact with a lot of small suppliers you know farmers of all kinds of you know, vegetables herbs and you know animals and stuff like that and he if you're a small farmer, you know, maybe you don't have the time, you don't have the money to have a web page, you know, to contact a restaurant. So he's like the spider of the network. And that's the way, you know, he always, he comes to us and like, I have this and I have this and I have that. So what are you specific looking for uh, within the local uh, produce and products that you're talking about? Is it the texture or is it the, the flavor or, or is Fla it the originality I mean, or? I would say if you're a small farmer, you have better quality. You know, you have better control of the whole line, you know, from, from, from when they're small to, you know, uh, you're selling it to, uh, to the restaurants. And uh, usually they're like small transportations also. And you, it's easy if you have a small farmer because you can, you can uh, ask them for uh, specific ideas. Can you do this? Can I have this part of the animal? Or can you do this with the, the vegetables, etc., etc.? And you can decide, can I have only carrots that like, exactly this big. I mean, it's not the, uh, the most sustainable way sometimes, but usually we, when there's so many other restaurants who maybe wants the carrot that is like this size and we can have the small ones. Mm -hmm. So you have a better contact with the, with the supplier when they're smaller like that. Finding the, the local produce and products around here, what is Gothenburg known for when it, when it comes to ingredients? Like yeah, that? the seafood, of course because it's so close to the world, it's on the west coast. I would say like uh, smurg and shrimps. <laughs> if you just say one thing, I would say 
that's the first thing I would say to someone who doesn't know anything about Gothenburg. I would say like the shellfish and oysters and mussels and all that kind of stuff. But then of course we have, if you just go inland, we have, I mean, many good small farmers, you know. As you know, many of the top chefs in the world, which you are one of, oh. uh, are focusing on the concept of uh, no waste kitchen or nose to tail eating or uh, farm to fork cooking. Yeah. What's your take on that? A little bit of everything, like you just mentioned. But uh, I mean, say 10 years ago, you, you didn't really think about sustainability. Nowadays, it's just you find so many creative things you can use with the, the little. Uh, onion button, the little carrot button, and stuff like that. I mean, today, you, I mean, we ferment, we dry, you know, we smoke, just to sort of uh, add more life to the ingredients, you know. And it's uh, it's really good. And then also nowadays, like fermenting, it's it's healthy for you also. It's not just a way of preserving things. It's also very good for your health, and that makes it even easier to think in that direction all the way with everything you use even like from the vegetables to the fish, to the beef, etc. whatever you use. Innovation is more and more becoming a, a strong concept within the contemporary kitchen. Yeah. Uh, how do you invent yourself in the kitchen? I think you get inspired by other chefs, you know. Someone just adds something and it looks nice, or you just see a picture of something, but you don't really know what it is, but you see a nice, a nice plate of something, and she's like, wow, that looks nice. And then you sort of get an idea, ah, I can do this and this and that. So I think you get inspired by all the other chefs around the world. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I think it would be really hard just to keep thinking on your own, you know, start every day with a blank page. I think you need to some, some inspiration, you know. Mm -hmm. That's why it's so good, easy to be a chef nowadays, because there's so many good chefs out there. Yeah. So Niklas, a couple of years ahead then, uh, what kind of food will you have on the plate? Will it be basically the same as you have today? I would think it would be less protein. I think it would be more rare, you know, to see it. Maybe even when you have protein, it would be really good protein, you know, like beef or pork and stuff like that. But I would think we would go more and more to the plant-based, definitely. I like that myself, you know, it's, it's, really, it's really good for you and it tastes really well. And, it's really fun because when we have customers here, you know, they eat like, it's like the, the big nine course menu and the, the staff ask like, yeah, yeah, enjoy your night and any favorite dish. Sometimes they're just like, yeah, they get embarrassed. Like, yeah, I really like the vegetarian dish. It's sort of like, and then you get more like, ah, oh, yeah. It's really easy, not, it's not easy, but it's nice when they appreciate the vegetarian dish because vegetables taste really, really good. Especially now when you like go more organic, Instead of like just like the big farm carrots, you know, just go like pick the small, good local producers. So Niklas, uh, now you you got your uh, philosophy in place. Yes. Uh, you got your stars uh, in place. Uh, you got your nice staff here, and uh, you have your uh, local producers around here. So where will you go now? What about the future? That's a really good question. Um, I would say more vegetarian way, maybe and maybe we do a la carte instead of tasty menus to get a wider range of people. I don't know. Hopefully, not two stars anyway. This one star is good, I would say, because uh, it just takes more work. Be more picky with the stuff. Um, it's a really hard question to answer. <laughs> Uh, so, Niklas, uh, if you were to give an advice to a young person that wants to become a chef, like yourself, uh, what would you say? Travel and work all over the world as much as possible. And don't become a sous chef or a head chef too f early. Try to work as a line cook, because you learn so much more.